Welcome to my world Won't you come on in Miracles I get That's me Still happy now and then Look into my world Leave your cares behind Welcome to my world Built with you in mind Knock and the door shall be open Seek and you will find Ask and you will be given Love's peace of mind I'll be waiting there With my arms unfurled Waiting just for you Welcome to my world Welcome to my world well, That's right everybody, welcome to my world The song for the world On the 20th day The 20th day of uh, Let me move over here I don't, I don't, The screen got smaller for some reason So uh, I had a 20th day of August 2019 It's going by quickly I know I say it every time But what are you going to do? God, I can't have everything magical. Magical. But, uh, yeah, so the screen's a little small. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but uh, I'll find a way to make it bigger. But not right now. But, you see, uh, I got my pals with me in the background there. You can see uh, Elvis and Dino and Francis Albert Sinatra, which is Tuesday. So it's Blue-Eyed Tuesday. Tino's taking a break. He's, uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's got uh, napkins hanging all over the place. He's, he's trying to move the mirrors. He's, re he's like rearranging the place. And, hey, if he's happy with it. If it makes you happy. <clears throat> so, anyway, let's get going with the show. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Yankees were off. L oh, I didn't get water. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, there's nobody here. <laughs> uh, Yankees were off yesterday, Mets won, and uh, so uh, uh, still, still a very strong possibility for, uh, for them to meet in the World Series. That would be unbelievable, believable. And the Yankees start a, uh, I don't know, three-game, four-game series with Oakland, and then they, right after that, Seattle, so they're up on the West Coast, and, uh, you know, big series, big, big, big. So uh, let's get cracking here. We had protesters today, um, uh, actually yesterday, down uh, by Nassau County slash Hempstead uh, executive offices, uh, protesting the fact that uh, they're going to have a better, uh, a bigger police presence now in the town of Hempstead because of violent crimes and homicides have actually gone up. So they want to get more police out there and try to... Uh, and uh, try to bring those numbers down and bring some, you know, peace to the, to the neighborhood. And they're protesting that. <laughs> Holding up signs, we don't need cops. We, don't. we need them to, to be educated and, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, and, uh, how to deal with the public and everything. They're not the ones that are killing it. It's the people that are killing people. So if you have more cops out there patrolling and questioning things... Wouldn't that mean more people would live, less people would be hurt and shot? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Help me. Somebody help me. <laughs> this just goes to show you. Eh? Just anything, any reason they can get at you. Whatever. Uh, in Cleveland, three reverends were uh, arrested and locked up on... Uh, Possession of uh, possession on uh, human and sex trafficking with girls as as young as 14 years old. 
And um, for two of the three, this is additional charges because they were already um, locked up and uh, arrested and locked up uh, back six, seven months ago. And this is just part of another investigation of which they're named on that too. Unbelievable. I told you it's not going to stop. I'm, I'm talking about that's going to stop, but it's not going to stop with the arrests. There are people tweeting, and I don't mean like the way Trump tweets, President Trump tweets. I'm talking, <laughs> save their skin, boy. They're turning everybody they can in. And good, good. Take them, lock them up, throw them away, give them an injection, something. You know, what they're doing to people and, and women and children all over the world, how they are destroying their todays and their tomorrows is, is severely the work of the devil. And let them do what they got to do. Go, get them, flip people over, get some more, get to the big ones, give me the names of the people. Forget about what these, not forget, but these three reverends, were, they, they weren't just doing it for their own, although. <laughs> but they got to know other people that were doing it. They got to know other reverends that were doing it, teachers, assemblymen, and who cares? Let them all go. Let them all go down the road to hell. You know what I mean? I don't mean let them go free. I mean let them go down the road to hell. It's terrible. Terrible. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy because it's been a long-standing secret society all across the world. And uh, so to start taking it down and, you know, other countries are doing the same thing. And they're getting people and locking them up and bringing them to justice and... So there's still hope. There's still hope to save the world for our kids and our families and, and future families. God bless them all. And uh, a woman uh, had been to the doctor several times, unbelievable pains in her back and her side, and, you know, they just uh, they couldn't figure out what it was. And, you know, she was rather obese. And uh, so the only conclusion that they came up with, it must be kidney stones, and so they're going to go in and remove the kidney stones. And help alleviate her pain. And uh, while she was in the hospital, she gave birth to triplets. Come on, join me. Join me with your eye blinks. She had no clue that she was pregnant. One, w w one person, I'm one person, one baby. <clears throat> okay, if you're a little overweight, you know, if you're obese, and I said, eh, maybe, maybe you don't notice it. I don't know how, but uh, you know, you don't notice that your body is changing, that you have three human beings growing inside of you all the way up until the time of birth and you have no clue. Wow. That's some scary stuff. Boy. That is really scary. But anyway, uh, mom's doing good and the triplets are all doing good. So there you go. That's just, yeah, it's just crazy. Too crazy for me to even think about. I still like to think about it. Got to be honest. And uh, the uh, National Suicide Hotline is now going to a three-digit number, finally. You know, by the time you remember what the number is and you call here and you call, now it's going to be handled like a 911 call, but don't call 911. Um, you know, you have the urge, you feel like you're going to go. I, I don't, they haven't given what the number is yet. But just say it's 811, whatever. You dial 811, somebody picks up the phone right away. What's the problem? I'm having these thoughts. I, I, I'm, I'm very depressed. I'm thinking about ending my life. And you get, not hold on, please, and we'll find somebody. to talk. Somebody talks to you right then and there. You know, and they send the thing out, you know, through the computer. That gets a therapist or whatever it is to get on the line. And then the operator will get off and the therapist will continue talking. There's no break. There's no silence. There's, you know, maybe we save a hell of a lot of lives by doing that. So, yes, good work. Good work. So on Frank Sinatra, Blue Eye Tuesday, let's start off with this first song, which is very uh, uh, true, I would believe. You know, we've all heard it, you know. My girlfriend, my wife is a witch. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Those fingers in my hair That sly come hither stare That strips my conscience bare It's witchcraft And I got no defense for it The heat is too intense for it What 
good would common sense for it do Cause it's witchcraft Wicked witchcraft And although I know It's strictly taboo When you arouse the need in me My heart says yes indeed in me Proceed with what you're leading me to Well it's such an ancient pit But one I wouldn't switch Cause there's no nicer witch than you Take it! Cause it's witchcraft That crazy witchcraft And although I know It's strictly taboo When you arouse the need in me My heart says yes indeed in me Proceed with what you're leading me to Well it's such an ancient pit But one I'd never switch Cause there's no nicer wit than you Than you See? Oh, you were getting mad out there, all you ladies, when I said, oh, my wife, my girlfriend, she's such a witch. Oh, you were getting mad. Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Song father? Come on, take it easy. Take it easy over there. So, <laughs> so uh, let's see. Yeah, that was nice about the suicide. I love that idea. And uh, let's get a smiley one in here. In Ohio. Ohio. If you spell Ohio backwards, it's oiho. I don't know what that means, but the seventh grader, uh, um, you know, lives on a farm, works on a farm with his family, and he had his prized possession. Uh, I believe it was a cow. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it was a cow, livestock, and uh, uh, took it down to the carnival fair show, whatever they had down there, and um, he won fifteen thousand dollars in prizes. From uh, however they judge uh, the animal, I don't know, but uh, you know maybe add it in a pair of heels and something nice, you know, a little, you know, a little lacy, some who knows, maybe some false eyelashes, I don't know, but uh, he won, <laughs> he won. I crack myself up, don't I? But uh, so we won the fifteen grand, and what he did is he took it and he donated every cent of it to the St. Jude's Children Research Foundation, every cent of it. Because he wanted to see that money go to good, and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, find the cure for. Because uh, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody knows uh, St. Jude's. Uh, um, if your child is accepted, you know, you have to study hard for the test. And uh, but if you if your child is accepted, um, there's nothing you don't pay a dime. You know, and in most cases, if you need, uh, you know, uh, to travel, they they'll pick that up too. And uh, it's just it's just a great, wonderful thing that they do. They were started by Danny Thomas a long time ago. And then, you know, Marlo Thomas has taken over as a daughter. Remember Marlo from That Girl and um, from Friends? Mm, that's right, Rachel's mom. <laughs> anyway, always had a crush on her, always. And that kind of molded, uh, I guess, what uh, my eyes uh, um, liked, you know, when I see, oh, it's kind of molded after that, that kind of personality she was you know she was strong and she was independent but you know she was also a nice woman and took care of herself and cute and bubbly and pain in the ass and that you know anyway. but uh no getting back to that so uh, she's taken over since he passed away a long time ago and she's done a great job with it in his name 
uh, and in his memory. And uh, they do great things. They do great things across the country, across the world, fly them in, fly them out if they need be. And uh, so this kid just takes his 15 grand, you know, takes it in stride and gives it to them. Man, somebody's doing the right thing over there. Restores our faith again in, in, in parenthood or unclehood or whoever is involved with this man, this young man. Um, what did I say? was well, seventh grade or so. Come on. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. If I had the money, I would send him 15 grand back and I'd put another 15 grand in. But I don't, so too bad, kid. So <laughs> and um, uh, Israel, uh, uh, their lacrosse team, the under-19 lacrosse team, women's lacrosse team, played uh, Kenya. Um, this was a little while ago. Uh, but the story's coming out not because of what they did. But they played Kenya and... Um, Kenya comes out in the, uh, onto the field, and it had been raining on and off, uh, um, and the, the field was a little wet. They have no cleats, Kenya. They're, they're running around in bare feet. That's how they train. They don't have the money for, for the cleats. So, and, and Israel ended up beating them 13 to 4 because, you know, they couldn't stop. They were sliding. The, the, gra you know, the grass was wet, and the, it was terrible. And, and so all the, the, the girls on the, the Israeli team, they felt bad. You know, they're happy that they won, but they didn't want to win that way. And uh, so they found a way through their coaches to get the sizes of everybody on the Kenya team for the cleats. They went out and bought them cleats, and then they flew the team in, telling them that they had a, a, a special game coming up with Belgium. And um, so they come in, and they're ready to play, and hold on, stop. And here comes the Israeli team with all the names and they call them up one by one and they give them a box of cleats and socks and there's tears and crying and hugging each other from, you know, all the Kenya uh, athletes were just so moved by this, this gesture um, that they just couldn't believe it. And then they went up and they beat Belgium uh, 13 to 9, which was great. And then a couple of weeks later they were playing uh, Israel, Israeli, Israel again and um, they lost in overtime 11 to 10, much better game. They had the equipment. I mean, you know, can we learn from that? I think so. You know, yeah, give them credit, Kenya, for, for even showing up, coming to the game, you know, and, and, and competing in this world event, women's lacrosse, uh, with no cleats. It's just, it's, I've said it a million times. I told it to my son, Sonny, the clone, uh, when we were, you know, as he was growing up, and I still remind him, I still remind myself that, um, you know, we might hit a wall once in a while, and we might feel down, and, we, you know, we, I wish I had this. And I would Use this story and tell them. I'm just moved. Okay, so there you go. So a great story, and uh, we see what happens there. And then, uh, yeah, not too much news now after this. I'm not, I'm not even going to go over uh, what happened in New York. Uh, uh, it's uh, with the, uh, uh, the police officer being fired. Um, five years later or four and a half years later after, uh, unfortunately, uh, um, a man that they were, um, um, you know, the, the stories are, are so convoluted. Um, the, the real story is, is, isn't even out there, which it should be, but it doesn't matter. People are going to do what they want to do anyway. So, um, But, uh, you know, it's a real black eye and it's a real message being sent to, to all New York, um, uh, New York police that... Uh, there's really no backing on this. Uh, the officers didn't, in my opinion, deserve to be fired. Um, you know, the, the, they had a very large man, 380 pounds or wherever he was, and he was resisting arrest and, you know, they got him around the neck and tried to get him down. And then, unfortunately, it, it, it uh, kicked an asthma attack uh, in in him. And um, then in the, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, while they were trying to, you know, get, uh, I guess they were hitting it with steroids or whatever to get the asthma under control. He had a heart attack and he passed away. And, um, you know, uh, it, it was when the, um, they were going around holding up signs saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, uh, because that's what this uh, uh, gentleman was saying um, uh, when he was on the ground and they were trying to hold him down. And, uh, you know, the, the big complaint was by everybody, well, he was only selling loose cigarettes. You know, yeah, okay, it's against the law. But it wasn't the first time. He had uh, he's had been ticketed uh, and fined, I don't even know how many times. So um, usually it'd be like, uh, you know, just say his name was Sonny. You notice I didn't say the cop's name or his name, so I don't want to hear no shit. 
um, hey, Sonny, come on, we you with the cigarettes. We've been through this before. And the guy usually goes away. For whatever reason, he was off that day. Maybe it was the asthma. Maybe his heart wasn't beating the right way. But uh, he gave him a hard time, you know, had a few choice words. And uh, then I said, oh, okay, if that's how it's going to be, then you're going in. And that's how it all started. And it's, it's a tragedy from every angle that you could look at it. And, uh, you know, uh, the guy's mother was on TV, and she's saying, all right, so you lost your job. You can get another job. I lost my son. I can't get him back. You know, no, that's that's very true. But you hear it over and over again. Why don't you just comply? What are you fighting for? Saved your fight for inside in front of a judge. That's where you save your fight for. You don't fight on the street because that only makes it worse when you do get in front of the judge. God forbid. Nothing happens like happened here, but uh, just very sad, very sad all around. So I, uh, I understand there's going to be a lawsuit, but New York, just like the, almost the whole country is now, is a right-to-work state. And there is some question, if you watch the video, I've seen it. Um, did he put a chokehold on uh, that was banned years ago? Uh, it was close. I'll put it to you that way. But you got a guy that's 380 pounds, I mean, uh, you know, you're trying to get around and get his, pull him backwards and... When he was holding him, he was pushing him backwards and trying to, you know, not on purpose, but he was pushing him up against uh, a store window, and, and uh, this police officer was afraid he was going to go through the glass. And it was just, there was nothing, nothing uh, that you can say. It's just a, a horrible and, and, and tragic story from beginning to end. So, so anyway, I won't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Francis Albert Sinatra, huh? And um, God, I don't even know what time I started. Um, I had a lot of requests for this song over the past couple of weeks, and I hope everybody realizes by now, because I know they don't, that when we're doing that watch party, I'm not. It's not live. I tape the show four o'clock somewhere around there. Then we do the watch party. So that part is live. We're we are live. The show's not. And people start putting requests in. Uh, could you? No, I can't. The show's taped already. So a bunch of people I'd ask for Fly Me to the Moon. One of my favorites anyway, so um, I'll always do it. Fly Me to the Moon. That's all I It's just me and you. And that's it. Not like, you know, Ralph uh, Cramden, you know, and Alice. Not that kind of Fly Me to the Moon. This is Let's Me and You Go. Let's just go fly to the moon, man. Uh, that's all I want. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars In other words, hold my hand In other words, baby kiss me Fill my heart with song Let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words Please be true In other words I love you Heart song, let me sing forevermore. You are all I cherish, all I wait for and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, 
in other words, I love you. There you go. Why am I talking like a pirate today? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand anything. So, uh, yeah, we're rolling along here. I'm going to run out of news, so then I'll just have to sing, if you don't mind. Uh, the Ohio is really... Uh, yeah, stupid ass. Okay, once again, I didn't write down where it was. Son of a... Well, if you saw it or heard about it, had a 13-year-old um, driving an SUV. That's right, I said 13. Somewhere in, 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 in the Midwest or the South. Um, and um, there was a, a, a dog, a, a man walking his dog in the street. And um, he hit the, um, uh, she, I'm sorry. She hit the gas instead of the brake and uh, ran over the man and the dog, killed them both. In the car was an uh, eight-year-old uh, sibling. That's all they said. So, uh, could be a boy or a girl. That's what sibling means, all right? And uh, in the passenger seat sitting next to this 13-year-old was an adult. I'm guessing a beep, 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 beep. Hey, I had too much to drink, honey, you drive. I'm sure it wasn't the first time. Um, not about the drinking, I don't know about that. That's just my take on it. Um, but probably, again, bet it wasn't the first time that she drove. And um, uh, gone, the man is gone, the dog is gone, run over, and the girl, 13 years old, gonna live with that for the rest of her life. And, uh, but they arrested the, uh, uh, the adult that was sitting in the car for criminally, criminally negligent homicide. And um, rightfully so, I think, okay? And I'm sure more will come out of it later, and I think there'll be an alcohol-related um, reason uh, for him sitting. And uh, letting, uh, they didn't say if it was his daughter. I would assume it was. It was very, I don't want to say no information, but very limited information on something uh, as severe as that. And I was very surprised at that. Um, you know, an adult is in the passenger seat, the 13 year old is driving, there's an eight year old in the back seat, and, and, a, and a guy just walking his dog running in, and he's is, uh, uh, struck and killed, and the dog is killed. and you know, very little information, but it's a, it's a horrible story for everybody. And uh, whatever this man uh, um, gets uh, uh, time or, or, or a heavy fine or both, uh, you know, that's going to upset his life for, for who knows how long. The 13-year-old, she's going to be upset. The kid in the back seat's going to be upset. The family of the man that was walking, the, I mean, it just, you know, I just don't understand it, that when people don't use their brain, you know, and I've never been perfect in my whole life. And... Um, you know, back then it was different, uh, right or wrong. You make your own decision on that. And uh, but uh, if if you've had too much to drink, okay, don't let your thirteen year old drive. I don't think it's different down there to get licenses at sixteen. It's still thirteen, so not not good, no good, no good, not good mentally, not good um, uh, physically, uh, you know, mature wise and everything else. Here's a girl that panicked and uh, and uh, stepped on the gas instead of the brake. Now, maybe 99% of the time, if it's an adult, they're going to hit their brake. And maybe the guy lives and the dog lives, you know? So, you know, first of all, yeah, yeah. how big could this 13-year-old be? But terrible. Terrible story makes me very unhappy. And then, uh, <laughs> this is on the island of Long, some schmuck, and he is a schmuck, um, impersonating a police officer and he likes to go around and beep 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 and flash his brights and blast an air horn and get people's attention and you know hang a hold up a phony badge and pull people over he does he sees a van going by that's it i guess they cut him off or whatever the hell the story was but that's it he starts with the lights going on and all. Eh, eh, eh. that's it pull over the van pulls over he pulls up next to them the side door opens up and i'll get six Nassau County police detectives. <laughs> this moron for doing what he's doing, just period, is, is being a moron. But good, that's the way it's supposed to end. Something as stupid as that, what he's doing. He pulls over a van full of police detectives. <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta. All right. One of my favorite, Francis Alberts. I say that about all of them, don't I? You see him back there? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I got the world on a string, you know, sitting on my finger. That's it. Nobody's happier than that guy. I had a yo-yo on my string. <laughs> I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got the string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love I got a song I could sing I can make the ring go Anytime I move my finger Look at me Can't you see I'm in love Oh, life's a beautiful thing As long as I hold the string I'd be a silly so-and-so If I should ever let it go I got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got the string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love Life's a beautiful thing As long as I hold the string I'd be a silly so and so If I should ever let it go I got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got that string around my finger What a world Man, this is the life Hey now I'm so in love That's right. Ah, how could you not be happy? You got the world on a string and you're in charge. You're sitting on a rainbow. There's Skittles coming out your rear end. You're the happiest person in the world. Excuse me, I kind of lost control. Oh, boy. Shut up. Oh. <laughs> You'll read it later. Prince Andrew is appalled by these charges from Epstein. Interesting. So, um, Omar, and not the tent maker, the one that uh, was trying to go to Israel until Mr. Donald President Trump stepped in and Netanyahu went and said, you know what? No, you're not allowed to cross uh, into our country. You know, she's very outspoken against the Jews and everything else. So he says, no, okay, good. So she went on and held a press conference, you know, berating him and, and, and the president. Uh, of the country, uh, actually her boss, and all she kept saying was Trump, Trump this, Trump, Trump. He took a page out of Trump's book. If Trump thinks he can get away with that, I got another thing. I got another word for you, uh, Trump and Trump. I mean, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to like the guy. You don't have to believe in him. You could want him, wish him out of office. You can go light candles every week, but it's President Trump or Donald Trump or Mr. Trump. You're not some street thug. It just shows you the animosity and, and the borderline hatred she has, f not just for Donald Trump, but for the government in, in general, for this country in general. And, you know, the idiots out there are the ones that elected her. And that's why Minnesota is like one of the biggest um, uh, uh, states in the country um, with, uh, w with a huge, huge you know, um, following of her and her beliefs and her people and everything else. So... Um, uh, you know, and he don't tweet about that. He, he tweets way too much. But, you know, it, just when you think he's gotten better or something. You know. <laughs> but uh, that's just, it's, I, I'm not used to that. I didn't grow up with that. You know, we disagreed and there was, uh, you know, protests and stop the war and this and that and blah, 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 and impeach Nixon and that. You know, I, I grew up with all of that. But nobody was ever calling them just by their name, especially if you were in uh, you know, in in the arena with them working, you know, in, in, in the, supposedly for the same cause, you know, and you're up there on Capitol Hill and you you're have aspirations of becoming a senator and this and God knows what else, because anybody, Donald Trump proved that, anybody could uh, could be a president, you know, uh, 
what are you doing? You know, how do you just disrespect a, a man like that? You know, not him, the, the, the office, the office of president of the United States of America, of which you are living, of which you are making a hell of a salary on, of which you are free to go around and say whatever you want, anytime you want, uh, whatever. All right, I'm done. So um, I don't know if anybody got to watch uh, Fred Rubino yesterday and Christine, but, um, you know, they alternate. I tell you about it all the time. They alternate. Get the food out of here. And that's when they show you how to make delicious meals. You know, get it out of here. Like out of the kitchen, onto the table. Boom. Then they do at the, the alternate weeks. Now you do get the food over here. And what they do is they go out to different places, fast food restaurants, this or whatever it might be, uh, different pizzerias. And they bring the food home. They get it over here into the kitchen. And yesterday they did. That's when I know now that Freddie is, is he has people watching my show or he's watching himself. He's just not telling me because now I know. I've been talking now for a week about this stupid Burger King fake meat bull crap. And guess what he did on this show? Freddie, you're not kidding nobody. <laughs> so he does it. And the thing that was really kind of scary was um, he cut it in half. He went and bought a real Whopper, too, thank God. And he cut that one in half. I always, when I have a Whopper, God, I can't even remember. I, I quit bread and uh, mayonnaise, um, you know, and cold cuts. It was so long ago, and, and I keep getting bigger instead of smaller. I don't know. But um, whenever I used to get a Whopper, which is always cut in half, always, going all the way back to when I was a teen. And um, so he cuts it in half, and then he cuts the fake crap in half. And you put them side by side, you almost can't tell the difference because they put some kind of a thing inside the, this fake stuff um, that makes it look like it's, it's juice, you know. When you have a nice hamburger, it makes it look like it, you know. It's like medium rare or whatever. And, and, and why? Why are we going through all this? It's, it's got more, uh, he was saying, it's got um, uh, twice the sodium uh, as a regular. It's got twice or three times the carbs as a regular Whopper, uh, you know, what are we doing this for? What is the purpose for it? And it costs more. It's like $5 and, you know, almost six bucks, somewhere in there, $5.69 or something. For a fake, fake Whopper, uh, uh, what is going on in the world? Why am I talking like this? I don't know. Excuse me. Okay, so. There's another one of my favorites. Let's just face it. They're all my favorites from Francis Abbott. But um, this song, and I'll do them both back to back because if you remember a while back, I said um, how this song, Cycles, and uh, That's Life, are almost the same song. Just, you know, obviously different melody and, and different lyrics and everything, but it's kind of telling uh, the same message, you know. You're going to go through the cycles. You're going to have your ups and downs and over and out and this and that. And riding high in April, shot down in May. And, uh, you know, always stay true to yourself and understand and believe it's going to get better. You know, you're going to have good days and bad days. That's it, bottom line. But here is cycles. Love it. I just love that part in the beginning. So I'm down, so I'm out, so are many others. So I feel like trying to hide my head need these covers. Life is like the season. After winter comes the spring So I'll keep this smile a while And see what tomorrow brings I've been told and I believe Life is meant for living and even when the chips are low There's still some left for giving I've been many places Maybe not as far as you So I think I'll stay a while And see 
if some dreams come true. There isn't much that I've learned Through all my foolish years Except that life keeps going in cycles First there's laughter But then those tears But I'll keep my head up high Oh, I'm kind of tired My gal just up and left last week ha! Friday I got fired You know it's almost funny Things can't get worse than now so I'll keep on trying to sing, but please, just don't ask me now. It's the same message. In a little bit of a different way. Might be up on a coffee table for this one. That's life. That's, life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April. Shot down in me, but I know I'm gonna change that too. When I'm back on top, back on top in June, I said that's life, and as funny as it may seem, some people get their kicks stomping on a dream, but I don't let it. Let it get me down Cause this final world It keeps spinning around I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet A pawn and a king I've been up, down, over and out And I know one thing Each time I find myself Laying flat on my face I pick myself up and get back in the red. That's life. That's life. That's life. I tell ya, I can't deny it. I thought of quitting, baby, but my heart just ain't gonna buy it. And if I didn't think it was worth one single try, I'd jump right on a big bird and then I'd fly. I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king. I've been up, down, over and out, and I learned one thing. Each time I find myself laying flat on my face, I just pick myself up and get back in the red. That's life. That's life, and I can't deny it. Many times I thought of cutting out, baby, but my heart just ain't gonna buy it. When there's nothing shaking come this here July, I'm gonna roll myself up in a big ball and die. My, my. Ha <laughs> ha, same song, same message. Beep, 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 beep. 
We are coming to the end now. Make sure I got all my notes here. Everything's done. We're covered. Go Yankees tonight. I'm starting to perspire from the uh, humidity. I've had the air conditioning on for a while. It's still 80 up here. And this thing usually ice cubes. So uh, that means the storm is coming. If you, you know, if you can see my hands, they're all blown up. You can hardly see the, which hands. You can't even see knuckles on this hand and the feet and the legs. So there's something coming. Something's coming, and all think is love. I have no idea what I just sang, and I really don't care. I don't remember what time it was. Okay, good. So we had a nice couple of nice real stories on there, and some real ridiculously stupid people. But what are you going to do? When you're stupid, you're stupid. There's nothing you can do. Sometimes you don't even know. Like that thing that floats around Facebook and Instagram once in a while. Sometimes when you're stupid, you don't know you're stupid. Like when you're dead, you don't know you're dead. <laughs> very, very cruel. I don't be cruel. I do a heart that's true. I don't want no other love. A baby's do you have. So... Uh, also, I had a request for this quite a few times, and um, for some reason I didn't do it because it's my show and I don't have to do it if I don't want to. How do you like them apples? But um, I know you're waiting for an apology, but you're not getting one. This is... <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. No. Um, the premier, I would have to say, staple song um, associated with Frank Sinatra, but so many other people. Um, you know, the king of rock and roll had a beautiful version of it, you know, Liza Minnelli, and uh, even Paul Anka, who wrote the song, uh, sings it a little different. Nobody really sings the song the same way, which is, that is the mark of a really excellent, excellent um, uh, written song and, uh, and music, that there's enough freedom in there for you to, you know, for your own little influxes in here and there, and wow, that's good. So yeah, Mr. Paul Ankles wrote this, it doesn't say the year. Well, I didn't write the year, so. <laughs> I'm going to say 69. That's it. I'm done. It's over. I said it. But uh, here it is, my way. Everybody sing along with it. And uh, with it. I wish you never told me that uh, I say that. With it. But uh, everybody join along with me and sing. And, uh, you know, I hope everybody is going through life and doing things your way. Um, not selfishly and not at the expense of anybody else. That's not what this means. It means, you know, I did it my way. I did what, what I thought was right for me, you know, but without hurting anybody. I've made mistakes. I've had some regrets. But you know what? There's, there's, there's a peace inside of me knowing that I, whatever it is I did, I did it my way. Nice. Nice. And now... The end is near So I face Final curtain My friend I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived A life that's full I've traveled each Every highway And more Much more than this I did it my Way Regrets I've had a few But then again Too few to mention I did what I had to do And saw it through Without exemption I planned each charted course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew 
when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, and I stood tall, ended in my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried. I've had my fill, my share of losing, and now as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I say. Not in a shy way. Oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got if not himself? Then he has not. To say the things he truly feels, and not the word of one who needs. The record shows I took the blows and did it my way. That's right. Yes, it was my Can only be one way, my way, or the freaking highway. Got it? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, perfect way to end the show um, on Francis Albert Blue Eyes Tuesday. And uh, look, he's very happy. Seemed right behind me, just standing there in his beautiful suit. Dino, don't know what to do. Elvis, the Elvis, and. Uh, you know, a few other things over my head, song father. I don't know about the screen. I don't know what happened. But uh, anyway, so there's the show. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, whoever you're rooting for tonight, a lot of baseball action tonight. The Yankees, oh, very good. So let's hope they uh, kick some Oakland behind in, um, which doesn't happen too often. For some reason, they always seem to have our number, but what do you got to know? And um, I'll see you tomorrow. See you at 6 for the uh, watch party. And... Um, We'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock for, uh, I don't know, we're going to have a surprise. I think it's going to be Daddio and Chris, Christina. We're going to make a Daddio and Christina special request. I know he wants to hear, climb up on my knee, Sonny Boy. Okay, Dad. Okay, Daddio. And, uh, and then I said, maybe I'll do a little pal, you know. Be, uh, a lot of Italian men like that song a lot, you know, and especially... Uh, you know, that people that hang out in, in certain areas of life and, and in certain, you know, clubs, and, you know, that you can't get into, and if you know what I mean. But the very favorite of them, too. And the, if you have a son, you'll understand. And I try to teach that to my son, too. You know, when you have a son, you'll understand. When? Huh? Cuando? Cuando? <laughs> Cuando? <laughs> Cuando? <laughs> Un filio. So, uh, anyway, love you thank you very much. Uh, you guys always make me feel good, especially when we do the watch party. And uh, I'm noticing that the viewership is down. So think of it this way. It's probably Facebook again. But uh, it's like ratings on a TV show. You know, uh, it's a great show. Well, I wasn't talking about me, but all right. It's a great show. And um, But it's not getting the, the ratings aren't good enough. People aren't watching it. And they end up taking it off the air. You know, and, and a lot. 
a lot of great TV shows have gone off the air because of the powers to be. And, you know, they got the purse string, so they get to say yes or no if it stays on or not. And that's what they go by, you know. That was one of the first uh, analytics in the history of analytics. And uh, so I don't want that to happen here. You know, uh, we were averaging 1,000, 1,500, 800, 700. And I noticed that yesterday's show, maybe because it was a Monday and it's the last week, um, you know, before school starts, so maybe people are away, I don't know. Um, but um, it was like 400, you know. That's not, that's not the way where it used to be. So um, just share it, tell people about it, and we'll see what happens when school starts. And maybe I have to bump it up to seven. You know, we've been kicking it around now. It's, uh, another couple of weeks we'll be doing this three months. Three months. <laughs> Thank God I have fingers. And um, so it might be too early, you know, dinner time. And now with kids coming home from school, you know, so well, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll kick it up to seven, give everybody a chance to come home from school, relax, you know, hang out with mom, do your homework, have a little bite to eat, whatever, and then relax. So maybe we do it from seven to eight, okay? And... Um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, of course, I can't go rambling on and on and go past an hour because, you know, I don't want to step on Freddie Rubino's shows because he knows a lot of people. I would come over here and break my face, and I don't like that. So, so uh, again, bam, love is child tomorrow. Daddy-O and Chris, special request songs. They better be good. See you later. Ciao, bam. Bye. Tina says bye. Goodbye. Wish me luck with this bird. <laughs>